Tumba Dayadine. Welcome to the SNC podcast. Thank you for having me. So a few weeks ago, you were in Los Angeles to attend the Grammys. That would have been your what number of times? Um, I believe that would be our 20th year. Wow. The Grammys. Yes. Wow. Why is it important to you that you need to attend the Grammys? Well, for one, um, we used to live in Los Angeles. Um, but then when we lived there, I never really thought about mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. It was just one of, you know, one of those programs you, know, you watch on TV. Mm-hmm. Um, but having moved back to Nigeria, having read mass communication, and having seen the impact that the Grammys has on artists, on producers, or people in the industry, um, the corresponding effect, if you happen to win a Grammy, the multiplier effect, it's, it's tremendous. I mean, from an unknown artist, if you win a Grammy, whether you're a producer or singer or songwriter, I mean, the sky becomes your limit yeah. and you can go places. You know? So the Grammys are, uh, it's like the World Cup of football. It's yeah. the biggest musical event on planet Earth. So if you're a player uh, in music, any way in the world, you do aspire to be at the Grammys, to yeah. win a Grammy, to partake in the Grammy. But what do you think about the, not, it's, not, it's not a recent trend, but what about conversations that are happening now, now that people think that, why should people be aspiring to go to the Grammys, even though they believe that the Grammys isn't going to make any impact in your career and that you can be successful regardless of having a Grammy? Well, um, we've always preached that um, well, if, you, if you're nominated for a Grammy, all well and good. It's great for your career. It's great for your, I mean, to boost your self-confidence and maybe image. You can put all that on your CV. But if you don't win it, it's not, it shouldn't be the be it all and the end all of it. I mean, King Sonia has been nominated several times. Um, you won't hear him, True. you know, uh, quote-unquote, complaining or whining about it. It moves on about his life. Mm-hmm. Um, Femi Kuti. But then again, you've had numerous other Nigerians that have won Grammys. We have about 10 Nigerians mm-hmm. that you've, Probably never heard of that have won Nigerian uh, that have won the Grammys in various categories: songwriters, producers, whatever behind the scenes. So um, we always tell our artists, look, it's good to aspire for it because it, it is the most recognized musical event in the world, but it should not be the benchmark of your career. Um, look, there are over 200 million people in Nigeria. Have you sold to 10 percent of those people? not to talk of the continent of Africa. Have you reached out to all those people? Have you won all those your fans in Africa? And then talk about the black world in diaspora, have you? So the Grammys is yes, you should aspire for it, but look at Bob Marley. <laughs> Reggae is played all over the world, yeah. but they don't complain about whether they win the Grammys or yeah. not. Why do you think that a lot of Nigerian artists sidestep that process that you just mentioned, as opposed to starting with Nigeria, Africa, you know, other countries before you start saying, oh, I want to win a Grammy. I have mixed feelings about that. Uh, like I said, I won't put the Grammys down. Mm-hmm. It's the biggest musical event to you, I mean. But I see it from a different perspective. I see it as a content provider. It's great content for my platform. Mm-hmm. Um, it's great exposure for our artists. Um, we went along with some of our artists, Two Face, um, J1, Let Goldie, just to expose them to see what obtains out there, the level of performance, the level of excellence that yeah. you need to attain to be a, you know, a global player. Mm-hmm. Um, not just for them to aspire to grand, but to aspire to that level of perfection and that level of excellence. Yeah. Um, but I don't push my artists to say, oh, you must win a Grammy, no. Mm-hmm. Um, because <laughs> the Grammys are not made for Africans. They are not made for African musicians. Mm. They are made for <laughs> Americans who, whose songs are played on American radio mm-hmm. and whose videos are played on American TV. So the more we understand that and we put that not just in the back of our heads, we let everybody know that that's what the Grammys is about. Are you with me? Yeah. So, so I think it's just a bit of misconstrued or a, some misunderstanding that artists also always think or the general populace thinks in the, if you don't win the Grammy, you're a nobody. No, that's not it. Yeah. Now, I was speaking to an artist two days ago, and I was telling him, we're discussing about the Grammys and about trying to break into the American markets and the European markets, and we were discussing the power of a song. Now, I think we all believe that if you have a great song, that can go anywhere in the world, and that's very true. From example, Adele's, someone like you, you have Nicest Gongwa, so... But why do you think that, and set aside marketing, why do you think that even when you have a great song as an Nigerian artist, it's so hard 
for that song to break in foreign countries. But when it's like an American song or European song, it's just it's easier when it's a great song. Do you get my question? We have to understand the dynamics. Look, um, people have to remember that this is still a business. Whether it's a music business, mm -hmm. a movie business, it's still a business. Sure. You have to understand your market. If you're talking about a song like Gongwaso, mm -hmm. it has Yoruba, a lot of Yoruba in mm -hmm. it. So, of course, a lot of people who don't, even in this Nigeria, mm -hmm. who don't speak Yoruba, mm -hmm. yes, they might feel the beats, but after a while, that gets played out. Mm -hmm. Same thing with other African countries. So, you're talking of music made for a specific market. Okay, look at something like Despacito. Even though they feature just well, a bit. There are always exceptions to the rule. Sure. Look at African Queen. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. But you can make a case for African Queen because it speaks to the, yes. the black woman. Mm -hmm. Whether you're Nigerian mm -hmm. or Ghanaian mm -hmm. or from Trinidad and Tobago, you are an African Queen. Mm -hmm. You're black, you're, you're queen. So songs like that can sometimes skip that, you know, the boundary, mm -hmm. you know, get out of the loop. So our artists and the managers and producers have to understand that, look, you're in a specific market. You have to conquer that market first. Uh, Michael Jackson didn't get out, out of the US until he conquered the US. It wasn't overnight. Elvis Presley didn't. Are you with me? Yeah. Same thing with Prince or whoever, Jay-Z. They conquer their neighborhood, their community, mm -hmm. their state, the country, and then they go outside. Mm -hmm. So the same thing applies. Our artists just feel, oh, I just want to blow in the US. Why? Have you conquered your local market? There are two, like I said, there are two, people don't understand the dynamics. Mm. Have you sold to even 10% of those 200 million Nigerians before you say you want to blow up in Chicago or New York? And then what is it in that market for you other than just ego? How many Americans are going to really buy your CDs? How many are going to book you for a show? Are you going to be booked for a 10 million naira show <laughs> like MTN would book you? Or Are you with me? Mm -hmm. So you have to understand the business. You have to understand why you are in it. What are you in it for? Am I in it to make money? Am I in it to just write great songs? Am I in it to leave a legacy? Am I in it to yeah. make a living? Or I just want to win a Grammy? If that's the case, or if you understand why you are in the business, some don't know why they're in the business, so they just now want to be popular. I want to have one million followers. I want to have two million followers. Good for you, but you must be honest with yourself and understand why are you doing what you're doing. Yeah. If you're a rapper, why are you rapping? If you're a songwriter, if you're a producer, do you want to change the landscape? What is it that motivates you to be in this business? Yeah. So once you understand that, then you can set a plan. Okay, in five years, I want to conquer Nigeria. In under six, ten years, I want to conquer the whole of Africa. And after that, yeah. rule the world. Yeah, because we're talking about it from a perspective of songwriting techniques, and we just kind of delved into that conversation. So I think what you said is very, very valid, and it goes back to intentionality, right? Why are you doing what you're doing? Well, unfortunately, most of our... I don't want, like to say the young people get into the business, they don't have that understanding of why they're in the business. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, um, David O. Blew up, is you know, he's flying high, he's riding private, I want to be like that. Do you have the capacity? Can you write song? Can you perform? Do you, are you with me? Uh, okay, well, if you do blow up, how do you manage that success? How do you manage that wealth that comes with it? But do you think that's because we don't have enough resources in Nigeria? So that's like a gateway for people to escape poverty. Do you think um, that Nigeria was... I don't, I don't, you don't think, think so. so. Ni Nigeria is a... Look, the richest black man in the world is a Nigerian. He made his money right here in Nigeria. He didn't make it in the US or UK. Mm -hmm. The richest black woman in the world is a Nigerian. She made that money right here in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Kenya and D1 made it in this Nigeria. Are you with me? Yeah. I lived in Hollywood. I lived in Los Angeles. But I came here to this Nigeria to make it. And I dare say, you know, we made a difference. Yeah. So I'm the son of the soil. Why can't I make it in this, my home country? Because of SARS, because of Boko Haram, because you don't, you don't live in a community that they have. You see, like. when you see, I, well, I differ as an individual. Mm -hmm. I see opportunity. Mm -hmm. In the midst of chaos, there's somebody making money. There's somebody making a difference. When we came into this industry, my father almost disowned me. My father said, I sent you to America to go and read. <laughs> you want to do music? <laughs> but I'm happy that before he died, he was <laughs> everywhere. Oh, my mommy, my son, D1, you know mommy now. 
So whatever it is that you want to do, have a clear understanding of why you want to do it. When we came into this game, whether it was radio, TV, we didn't go into it because of the money. And that's very important. We went into it because we, had, we just loved doing it. I always knew from a young age I wasn't going to do a nine to five job. I wasn't going to sit behind a desk. I'm too <laughs> for that. Yeah. So in the back of my head, I knew I was just ranging an accountant to satisfy my father. Mm. But at the end of the day, it helped. So when the money started coming, I knew how to manage it. Yeah. I knew how to invest it. I knew how to multiply it. And then most people think, ah, okay, can I give one? What can blue? No, I read what I'm practicing. I have a master's degree in radio and TV. So when I run out of ideas, I can fall back on that knowledge. Oh, what did they teach me in class? Yeah. What did they? And then I've lived that life. So it's just to implement in Nigeria. And that's what we did. Now, speaking of you and Mr. Ogunwe, you reunited last year after being away. <laughs> <laughs> after being away for a while. And now you're back to your first level of broadcasting. Um, I never really left, yeah, you know? Yeah, but for people who may not know, you were the Commissioner for Information and Strategy for Ogunwe. I delved into politics yes, for... Did. I'm still in it. Um, look, I, I always say life is a book of chapters. You know, once you read, you close that chapter and you move on. Uh, or the li otherwise, life would be, you know, boring. It wouldn't be challenging. The same, the same way I left America to come Niger to Nigeria to help kickstart the entertainment business. And you get to a certain point, you feel like you're no longer challenged. And then you look around, like you said, you see a lot of poverty, you see a lot of things that could. And you feel, you know, there's only so much you can do as a private person. There are only so many jobs you can help somebody young get, which we did through what we do on radio and TV. But in governance, you can reach a whole lot more people. You can help alleviate. You can't solve the world's problems, but you can help. Mm -hmm. um, I refuse to be a complainer. You know, I refuse to be one of those people that just sit in the living room and say, Nigeria is bad, the roads are bad, Nepal is this, that, no. If you're not a part of the solution, you're part of the problem. And the problem with most of us Nigerians, we, we're a nation of complainers. We complain all day, then we go to sleep, and you wake up tomorrow and you think, oh, things are going to change. Who's going to change it? It's you and I. So if I don't go join that politics and endeavor to make a change, nothing is going to get done. It will continue to be the same way. And we'll continue to have people that we don't want in government because you and I think, oh, politics is dirty. It's not for you and I. So who's going to make that change? That's why um, I opted to, OK, let me not be a hypocrite. I don't want to be complaining. Let's go see. And I dare say, you know, um, it changed my perspective on a lot of things. Um, How so? Um, well, I mean, in campaigning and in going around with my boss then, uh, Senator Ibikun, I was the governor of Bogusit at that time, um, I was able to see um, a lot of how government operates. You know, it's easy for you to sit at your ha in your home and complain, oh, the education system is bad. But when you are on that side of the divide and you see how the mega resources are being spread thin, you know, when a state gets maybe 1.22 billion a month, as revenue, <laughs> and you, you, your salary alone is nine billion yeah. a month, nine billion, and you're getting two billion in revenue. Wow. So you are playing catch up, even just salaries, mm -hmm. and you still have to provide health services, and you have to provide infrastructure, mm -hmm. education. So you begin to have an understanding of, okay, this is what. And then we as people always think that government must solve all problems. No. You know, people especially graduates, people think, hey, I graduated, I can't get a job. You know, when you took the jam form, the date right on the jam form that once you graduate, to, you are guaranteed the job. Nothing, nobody's guaranteed anything in life. Yeah, I think maybe the, the reason maybe why people place the emphasis on been getting that guarantee for, of a job from jam is because when you say, and I get the whole perspective sir, of you want to have a romantic, not romanticized, you want to have a, an optimistic view of what life can, what life holds for you. But there are people who maybe they are just seeing so much sadness and they are unable to just see beyond yeah, what is in front of them. I understand so what you're saying. Yeah. Um, it's unfortunate mm -hmm. that this generation, this, they call them millennials, they didn't see the good side of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. We did. And that's why we have so much hope yeah. for Nigeria. Um, we grew up in a Nigeria where you could buy a car for 500 naira. Yeah. You know, um, you could fly to London for 300. I went to London for 300 naira. 
So we've seen that Nigeria can be good. Mm -hmm. We pray that it can, I mean, we're not in paradise yet, but we can't abandon it. It's the only country I have. I'm not going to abandon my citizenship and claim to be somebody. It's the only country I will call my own. So if I continue on your more, your more a little man for war, see you will live, baby. We are the only country that abuses our country. So if you go to Ghana, go to Cote d'Ivoire, they don't talk bad about their country. It's not like, look at Americans. If somebody comes out tomorrow and shoots 57 people, the, tomorrow they will say, God bless America. They start with God bless America, they end with God bless America. It's only us that we will abuse everybody. But we fail to ask ourselves, what have I contributed? What have I done to help change that scenario? No matter how small. I always say that. It starts from you, and I, I totally agree with that. So now that you're back together, Mister, no, no, when we, you didn't go away, <laughs> but you are now <laughs> back. <laughs> yeah, on hiatus. exactly. So now that your hiatus is over, what should we expect from? Well, it's not quite over. Um, I'm, I always tell people I'm a pol professional who happens to be in politics, um, and for a reason that I told you, I'm, I want to make a difference. I want to help create that change. I want Nigeria to be better, not just for myself, but also for my children. So I am in it for the long haul. It wasn't just a test and run thing for me. Um, I'm committed. It took me a long time to decide to say, okay, this is the next chapter of my life. Mm -hmm. So I'm still committed to it, um, but it's not a do or die thing for me. Mm -hmm. um, the political process is just part of what um, I aspire to do, or part of the chain. Mm -hmm. There's so many ways you can contribute to uh, the nation's well-being. So I'm, I'm still in it, yeah. um, but to keep mind and body and whatever, I have to continue to do what I love, yeah. um, which is um, entertainment and hospitality and radio and TV and everything that makes me happy that I wake up wanting to do every day. Yeah. And I think that we, we are all political animals in one way or the other, we, because you wanting something to be better for Nigeria, him wanting something to be better, we're all political animals. It just depends on the degree you see, as Issues, a matter of fact, yeah. you see, that's one thing I always tell people, that we're all political. Yeah. So don't say you politician. Yeah. We have a tendency to say you politician. Yeah. No. If you sit down in one Amala joint and you're discussing politics, yeah. you're a politician. Exactly. If you go and vote, mm -hmm. you're a politician mm -hmm. because you're trying to you're make change. Exactly. You don't have to wear the garb of APC or PDP mm -hmm. or AB before you become... Mm -hmm. So we must all understand that, that we are all political animals, like you said. It's mm -hmm. just the degree of... Um, Participation. Participation that, yeah. that differs. When you look at foreign investment companies and foreign individuals who are venture capitalists, you have the likes of the Saudi Arabian government, you have SoftBank, you have Peter Thiel, you have Chris Saka. I look at it when it applies to technology and how having foreign investment helps technology companies achieve skill. I always look at it from that perspective. And that just got me thinking about the Nigerian music industry. And I posed this question to Chief Fajr Miracle when I interviewed him, but I don't think I phrased it quite properly. Now my question was, or the question I wanted to ask him and I'm asking you is, do you think local investment is not enough for Nigerian, the Nigerian music industry to achieve scale and growth the way that we would like it to, to be, thus requiring foreign investment to actually play its role? Uh, it's a two-edged sword, okay. if you ask me. Um, when you talk about investment in technology. Those that, the foreign investors that do so, mm -hmm. they do so to what? To expand their reach. Sure. They are not doing it just to help Charity, your country. of course. I mean, Mark Zuckerberg that came here didn't do it just because he wanted to see <laughs> our link bridge. Mm -hmm. He wanted to expand the, his reach. Mm -hmm. Now, when you talk about the music industry, why would a foreign investor want to come and invest in Nigerian music? Is it because he wants to sell records in Nigeria? Mm -hmm. There must be a reason. But I sincerely think there's enough. There's enough to invest. And you can see it every day. Mm -hmm. But has there been a reciprocal return for the local investors? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I say no. I, for one, can tell you that. As an investor, somebody who invested heavily, <laughs> my money, blood, sweat, and tears. I didn't get the risk. But then again, I didn't do it to get mm -hmm. the monetary returns. I did it because I felt, wait a minute. This is what obtains where I'm coming from, which was America at the mm -hmm. time. And I thought, wait a minute, if we implement just 50% of what we learned there in Nigeria, we can raise. And I dare say we did. When we came back to Nigeria, you could hardly hear one or two Nigerian songs on radio. Mm -hmm. 
But if you turn to any radio station now, you can go to any party. If, if it's a, a 24-hour party, they will play Nigerian songs for 23 hours. You won't hear any Tupac Shakur, Notorious B.I.G. Mm -hmm. And I'm very proud to say I was part of you know, the kickstart of that process. Mm -hmm. So I think there's enough here locally that, are, that people are ready to invest. But the ones that have done it, <laughs> like Kenny's Music, like Empire Maids, um, you see how what the artists do, uh, and it discourages you. When you take, um, well, I mean, a young talent, uh, you take him to the studio, you invest money in production, you do a video, you change his, <laughs> his, his clothing, his wardrobe, and <laughs> you change his car, change his life. And after a few months, he blows and he starts to think, well, well I don't need the record company. <laughs> you know, I'm a star now. It's my money. And then after two years, he says, I'm leaving the record company. They are cheating me. You've forgotten that you were nobody before you could. And we see it being repeated time and time again from not just Kenny's to Empire, mm -hmm. everybody. So it's something that needs to be addressed. And that's why you're not, you don't see more people investing in that. But what do you think that, just sticking with that point, what do you think that artists are failing to understand when it comes to the business of music? Um, exposure. Look, I always tell artists, look, it's better for you to be in the structure, have a good management, have a good record label. You can't be the songwriter, the, the singer, the producer, make your own video, be your own marketer, be your own... But when you're starting out, don't you think that they have to do that? When you're starting, when you're first starting out, don't you have to do that? When you just, no one believes in you, you only believe in yourself. You kind of. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, you do your hustle. Yeah. I mean, we, I mean, even Jay Z and everybody else did it. They sold yeah. their records That's out of the trunk of their yeah. car. But the aspiration was always to get noticed enough to get signed sure. and have somebody do, do that. all that for them. Mm -hmm. But in our climb, when that does happen, they do get picked, and they do ride on the coat or the backs of. The, it gets to a certain point when you're supposed to now Hang let on. the record company take you to that higher level. Our artists tend to see it as, why are you getting 20% or 30% of my money? But I always tell them, look at it this way. Isn't it better if you're with me and we share, we make 100 million, mm -hmm. and I'm taking 30% of 100 million, and you're, or you are making 20 million, or 30 million by yourself. So if you are going to be able to make more in collaboration with a well-known record label that is going to promote you, take your works everywhere you want it to be and to give you that next level, that next lifestyle and that next level income, mm -hmm. why not? But you see, our artists start to listen to the people that were not there or their friends, their mother, their family. They say, ah, you know, why is your record label, ah, why are you getting, you know, can you call this next person to blue after I think boom? Can you? And then they start to. And then next thing you know, nobody hears from them again. Well, on the flip side, do you think that there's some justification to the fact that people say that some record labels do not fulfill their own part of the bargain, of the, not bargain, of the contract? Hence why the artists begin to act out. But if you look, is it all record companies that don't fulfill the, 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 the bargain? The claim is the majority of Nigerian record labels don't. That's what the artists always say. The assertions, yes, that you see on well, social media. I will speak from my experience, mm -hmm. and I will tell you that most of the artists don't fulfill their end of the bargain. Are you with me? And I've heard some people say, well, they don't let them have access to, um, to their own lawyers. Or... Yes, so question. Uh... Look, I will, I will tell you a, a short story, okay. very quick one. We had an artist once that I don't want to use the word dispute. There was the family felt, ah, you know, um, uh, child is not, you know, making what we think, you know, should be, should be making. You guys are not taking care. We said, okay, come down. Why don't you come down to the office? Let's have a talk. And the parents came, the family. And we dug into our files and we brought out the files. Mr. X, this is how much we paid in January. This is how much we paid in February. Did you sign for this amount of money? Did this? And by the time we showed the family how much this particular artist had made, they were full of apologies. They couldn't even apologize, they just left quietly. Mm. So there's a lot of misconceptions out there because 
the record label will not disclose to you what this artist is made mm -hmm. or has been paid or how he or, he or she spends his money or her money. Are you with mm -hmm. me? But there's a lot, a lot of that that goes on. But as a record label, you have to protect your client, you have to protect your artist. Yeah. It's left for them to tell the truth and say, whoa, these people did right by me, I mismanaged the funds, or I didn't do, or I didn't spend according to how. Are you with me? Yeah, but do you think that in trying to protect the artist, which is very true because you have to protect your artist, but do you think that in when situations become very dicey and the artist is claiming that he or she has not been paid any money or the money has been taken from them from shows, the onus is now on the record label to now, I'm not saying embarrass the artist, no, but show proof and say, okay, this, this and this is what we have paid you thus far. In the record books in this Nigeria, I'm mm -hmm. yet to see an artist that's taken a record label to court and has won. I am yet to see it. I can be corrected, yeah. but I am yet to see an artist mm -hmm. that took a record label and won. We, this, these are companies, legitimate companies, at least the ones that I know. And for you to operate, you have to have certain standards. And most of these record labels are not hungry, hand to mouth. Prime time has been here since the beginning of time. Kenny's music has been here. So it's left for the investigating journalist to go and dig and mm -hmm. investigate. It's not for the record label to come out and say, ah, yes, we paid oh, you no, five no, million. Yeah. So if we have good journalists that can dig and say, ah, no, you made the 100 million. These people paid you 80 now. They kept their own 20%. This is, and the records are there. If you come here, we will show you the records. Mm -hmm. If you go to any record label as a journalist, if, but, our people are in these days of social media. People only hear one side of the story and they just go to town. Ah, record labels cheat the artist. I'm just going to go back to the investment company question that I asked you. But when it comes to record label signing artists, why don't they have the artist make it a, a requirement that the artist must have his or her lawyer there so that that in, in some way invalidates the claim that I signed this contract under duress, or I did not know what I was signing. Why do some labels do it hush hush and they say, "Oh, sign our lawyer is here"? I'm it, not aware of other labels' mm -hmm. practices. No, 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 yeah, I'm just. But I'm I can just tell you, when prime yes. time, I can to manage artists. <laughs> everything was public. Um, you bring your lawyer, you read the document. The documents are given to you. Nobody says that you must sign. Nobody holds a gun to your head. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, we had a queue, a long queue. We were not even willing to sign that itself. Most came begging and pleading and prostrating and and I'm being honest, I'm not, not trying to show up. Most came begging that please I will do anything. They won't take sixty percent of my no 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 we don't need that. The normal standard twenty, thirty percent is okay. But at the end of the day, most of them don't fulfill their ends of the bargain. As you know how the world has turned, people don't buy CDs anymore. So the income now comes from shows, yeah. from, from performances. And that's why even abroad you will have the record companies will sign it what they call a 360 contract. Yeah. So every money you make, whether it's endorsement, we share it because I am the one I have to invest in you. So why am I, how am I going to, in case the record doesn't sell, that's why you will see some artists on their second, third album, they're still living in the ghetto mm -hmm. because the money the record label has invested must be recouped. Whether your song is blowing or not, if I've spent $2 million <laughs> to get you to that level, I must make that $2 million first before you start to, all the limousine rides you, you know, as a lawyer, you know. So, but is, is this our client? They say, ah, but when you blow gone now, ah, how come? I have friends that in America that they are on their third album, look, I go and ask boys to men. By the time they did their third album, they were still living in the project. Um, New edition. Mm -hmm. The story is, yeah. so if the record label invests, they must recoup their money before you see a dime. All the flights, the, the concerts, everything. Somewhere. But in our climb, it's not understood that way. People just think, ah, but you know, ah, only a blow gone now, so ah, how come? But why do we seem to understand that outside the country? But Nigeria, it seems like we just, we just, we just like jaga jaga in this country. Yeah, because we don't tell the story properly. We don't tell the story correctly, and that's why we need good journalists mm. that will go out and tell both sides of the story. But when you look now, before these people signed you, you were living in this one room in, in Bariga now. But after they moved you to so so so, you were living. It wasn't, mm. it's like somebody that goes for a job interview, and after three months, they moved you to a new apartment, they gave you the. 
and then after six months you say you want to resign. You have to return all those company properties. You can't keep the company car. You can't continue to live in it. The company will not continue to pay for the house. Yeah, they are no longer, I mean. Now, just to go back to the in foreign investment companies and individuals, the part of the reason why I ask that question is, do you think that if we had more stories out there by investigating journalists, knowing that they are local investors, actually putting money into the Nigerian music industry, that would help not necessarily diminish, but call the narrative that it's fraud money and drug money that is fueling, you know, the success uh, in the Nigerian um, music. Do you think I, that would help? Because you know, you always hear stories that are Nigeria, the Nigerian music industry is only being sustained by four one nine. I disagree totally. Okay. I, from my interactions, though, when I was heavily into, and I'm still into the, I. Look, you see, people don't understand the amount of money that can be made in entertainment. Mm. And I, I say this because we had friends that were, they would come and ask us, ah, you know, any boys, hey, shall I hear from me now? Ah, how, how? Because they just couldn't understand that, ah, you know, ah, you just are riding a home, you're riding a ring. They don't believe the amount of money that can be made in entertainment. Look, there are 200 million people in Nigeria. All I want to do is sell to 10% of them. You know how much a CD is? 200 naira, 300 naira. If I sell to 10 million people times 300, do you know how much an average Nigerian artist charges for a show now? 10 million naira. Mm -hmm. So if I do two shows a month, 20 million naira. People don't know. So when you buy those 10,000 naira tickets to go and watch any artist of 50,000 naira, you buy a table. So there is money to be made in entertainment. There are people investing in it. You saw how many shows there were in 30 December. Sure. If there was no money, I mean, corporations would not put, I mean, they would not impair. I mean, you, I don't want to name names, mm -hmm. but you know. Mm -hmm. So there's something in it for them. There's something in it for the artists. But you must hone your craft. You must perfect it. You must continue to be diligent, and you must continue to upgrade yeah. and do the right thing. So the investment is there. There's money in this country. No, no, and I, the population I, is there. The, yeah. I mean, we're willing to, if I hear good music, I will buy. Yeah. So if an artist came to you now, sticking with that, if an artist came to you now and said, I want you to invest in me or sign me to a deal. What exactly would you be looking for? Would you be willing to? Well, I will tell you that now I'm the wiser. As of then, I was doing it because of the passion, wanting to uplift you. I still want to, but my responsibilities outweigh. I have kids I have to put through college. I have a wife that I have to maintain and take care of. Mm -hmm. I want to live a good life. I'm getting older. I don't have that energy that I had 20, 15 years ago to run after and beyond an art, behind an artist. And if you forget that artists are also like, they're like babies, they're like children. You have to monitor them, you have to guide them. You can't be seen here, this is where you must go. You can't smoke this, you can't drink this, you can't wear this, you can't. I don't have the energy for that anymore. It's not part of my challenge anymore. Um, I, feel, I feel I have done enough to hand over to the next generation and let them but I still maintain that there's so much to this industry that we've not even tapped into yet. Grammys is the least of our worries. Mm. I mean, think of 10 years ago, we had all our awards were here, Dynamics, mm. Amen Awards, Global Excellence, City People. Every other week, every other month, there was an award. And it, it can still be done. Yeah. You know, so it's, if you can package it, I mean, the artists are, is not they are not going to package themselves and be giving themselves awards. It's mm -hmm. late for. But nobody wants to do it. Now, I'm not so sure if you're aware, during Grammys week, there was like chatter about Rock Nation brunch. And I saw online people were saying that we need to have a Rock Nation type of brunch in Nigeria. Not Rock Nation brunch, but our own kind of brunch. But people were like, the only reason that would never work is because there are too many factions in the music industry. There's too, there's too much ego and there's too much pride. Do you agree with that? I don't even think along those lines. See, that's the problem. We always see the negative side of everything. People always say, it won't work. Have you tried it? I mean, there's nothing that I get invited to that I don't go. I mean, unless I'm not in the country. I was with um, Banky and Captain Demore at their, at their show. I was at Ali Baba's show. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing that stops us from gathering. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be a Rock Nation style. Mm -hmm. Look, the reason that Rock Nation happened was because everybody was in LA for Grammys. Yeah. 
Yeah, because for me, I was thinking about this, like, so, okay, so, okay, go ahead, sir. Everybody was already in LA, yes. so it's just one of those parties, mm -hmm. like, okay, let's get together in Didi's house and let's have some champagne or let's have brunch. Mm -hmm. It wasn't quote-unquote, like, okay, you know, we are going to have... So that's the normal Grammy trend. Um, there'll be, I don't want to say, more, um, most people in the industry, like uh, EMI Records might say, okay, Sony Music will say, okay, our party is at the chairman's yeah. house. Yeah. So everybody has their parties. So I'm No, sure I think maybe they just saw the Rock Nation brunch as the pinnacle, not like pinnacle, but like as this picture has a lot see, of black people. Don't, people who don't understand things will now try to qualify it according along the Nigerian. Yeah. We, we, we all mix with each other. We know who everybody is. I mean, I say Don Jazzy, we mix. So who is to say that we can't have a gathering? And if I need something from him, I, I can pick up the phone and call him. If he does need something from me, so what's the ego? what does the ego have to do with anything? Okay, yeah, because I think for me, I was just thinking about the fact that what award show would be the centerpiece of this type of gathering? Because you may have heard, and I'm sure you have, about the, the disputes or the conversations that people have about award shows in Nigeria not being valid because sometimes it's based on bribery and corruption and maybe the artist doesn't really deserve that. So I was just like going along with their lines. I was like, okay, so first of all, which award show would the industry even agree? It's not say? particular. It's not peculiar. It's, I've also seen, you know, I mean, with the I've Grammys, several, right? Yes. I mean, even look at Grammys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kanye West has mm -hmm. been on stage how many times to say no. Mm -hmm. uh -uh. This person uh -uh. deserves it. Exactly. So that's not, we should not say Nigeria is bribery. Mm -hmm. Even in Ghana, I've been to several awards in Ghana that say, ah, no, this one, they, they were booze and mm -hmm. it will always happen in any society. But we have our own thing. Let's carry our own thing with pride. We should not all say, I aspire that I must be Grammy, I must be Grammy. Whatever we have, if we carry it with pride, nurture it, it will grow. It will grow, but the tendency is uh, you, they will nominate us, they won't even show up because they feel they are now too big to come and accept a Nigerian award. You forget that the same Nigerian that come and buy your music, they come to your shows, but you are now too big to come and ask, receive a, an award from Nigeria. If I move on to another question, do you think that there are some award shows that once you have achieved a certain level of, I guess, status or... <laughs> your eyebrows. <laughs> you, are, you, <laughs> you see, that's you see, that's the mindset. That, right? That's the mindset yeah. that you and I mm. need to help correct. Yeah. No, I know. I'm just asking because I'm like I'm trying to understand. If the you other. think you've outgrown Nigerian awards, then you've not outgrown the Nigerian market. You don't need Nigerians to buy your record. And believe you me, they will tell you eventually. They will no longer patronize you. They will not come to your shows. If you think you've outgrown, you are too big to now come and show up and receive an award that your fellow Nigerians want to give. But you can run to South Africa to receive an award, or you can run to... Yeah, because I'm, I'm just trying to understand the logic. I, I, yeah. don't, I don't think so. Until Michael Jackson died, <laughs> if he was nominated for Grammy, he went. Mm. If he was nominated for Soul Train Award, he went. Unless he was not in the country, he was mm. on tour or whatever. And they would always record and say, look, I'm sorry I'm on tour. Beyonce would never say she's too big to receive an NAACP award or... Girls Rock Award. No, because they know the importance. That's your constituency. If they're rewarding you and they're saying congrats to you, you go and you accept. You don't say you yeah. are. A few more questions before we wrap up. So there are lots of young people who are trying to build, who are trying to be entrepreneurs like you and Mr. Ogungwe and trying to have things like Primetime Africa and you know AIT Jams. Can you talk about the process in creating content and creating shows for a network because it's one thing for you to like music and know how to present so it's a totally different thing for you to actually like you said provide returns to shareholders with what you're doing um okay you it's, it's it's hard for me to say this is how of course number one you must ask yourself why you are in it some people like i said earlier some just want to be popular they want to be on tv they want their faces known it's all well and good. Some want to make a difference, make a change, uplift the industry. You know, I mean, just do. Our motivation was different. Mm -hmm. We just wanted to implement and help create a bit of change. Ah, look, when we came in, when you listen to radio, radio was really boring. Radio was like very 
Solemn, you know, when they read news, good evening, this is the news at six. You would think somebody died. So we just thought, this is not. And thank God the chairman of Ray Power that time, Dr. Raymond Douglas, mm -hmm. he came to LA to visit us and we took him around. Him. This is how radio is supposed to be, and he agreed with us. Radio is supposed to be, whether it's 7 a.m., 8 a.m., you can play Beyonce, you can play Jay Z, you mm -hmm. can play. Like Nigeria had seven after between seven and twelve, he saw them Jim Reeves. Mm. So we wanted a change, and that evolved in also into also playing Nigerian music. At a point before, wait a minute, you listen to radio all days, Notorious B.I.G., Tupac Shakur, and Michael Jackson. Yeah. How does that represent the Daddy Show Kid that we go and listen to on Friday? Um, the Two Face, and how do we get our own? Our own? Do we promote our own? Are we doing a service to this nation by playing Michael Jackson 24 hours a day? Yeah. So you must ask yourself, why am I in it? Is it just because I want to be popular? Is it because I want to make change? Is it because I want to help an industry? Or I want to contribute? Or I want to get rich? And don't, I mean, be honest with yourself. Yes, nobody wants to be poor. Yeah. But I can sincerely tell you that when we got in, I was not thinking of, I swear, for the first seven years, I didn't have a dime. I was broke. But I didn't even know. Because I was happy doing what? If you wake me at 3 a.m., I was happy to be on radio. I didn't leave radio till 12 midnight every day. I did that for seven years. Well, I think of seminal shows like ID on the Street. You know, how, how did that kind of get put together? Well, I mean, you see like that? I told you earlier, we went to school for mm -hmm. this. I'll give you an idea. In, in our classroom was a radio station for some of our classes. When you walk in, it's an actual radio station. So you report to class, and you, you provide the content, you write your script, mm -hmm. you handle the mic, and you do a program. Same thing for, for, for TV. You would go out, you'd be given an assignment, go and produce a 60-second commercial, or go and produce a drama. Or, so we learned yeah. how to write, how to produce, how to even present, although I never thought of myself as... I would never be in front of a camera. I always felt, okay, more like I would be a producer. And we have created quite a lot of programs on AIZ at that time. Mm. Um, but eventually, we found ourselves in front of the camera. So for a prospective person that wants to create content, you must ask yourself, why am I doing it? And that, that helps. So that when the money is not coming, the yeah. passion will keep you doing it. But if you do it long enough, the money will come. It will put food on your table. But you must ask yourself, why am I doing it? Is it to create change, make a difference, empower youth, um, elevate the industry, create a new industry, let people see a new version of TV or radio? And I mean, look at today. When we came in, there was no such thing as a 24-hour radio station. Mm -hmm. We were abused from today to tomorrow that 24-hour radio. I'm American boys today who listens to radio after 10. But look at it now. Yeah. If you're not 24 hours, you're not running anything. It's the same thing with goes to TV. I'm happy I was part of that change. Yeah, because that's my final question. When you look at your career, yeah, Mr. Gungwe, and books are definitely going to be written and have been written, your contribution is always going to be chapters, not footnotes. How does that make you feel? Um, I'm happy. I'm elated. Um, you, you always want... Look, the reason, one of the reasons we, we remember the late Awolo was Namdi Azikwe is today. It's because of their contributions free education, whatever, whatever. Um, I would like to think when I leave this world, I will be remembered as, ah, Kenya and D1, no. they did one, two, three, four, five, they made a difference, they made a change, they contributed one, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll be able to tell my grandchildren, you know, ah, I was part of that. Yeah. You know, I helped make that, I helped, you know, make or my children will go somewhere and they will mention exactly. their names. Ah, your father was yeah, D1, you know. ah, no, 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 come in. And, so that's one of the reasons why I do what I do. Mm, we thank God that we've been able to make a good living out of it. Um, but the Yoruba says, a good name is better than gold. So um, I'm happy um, when I go places. And sometimes people don't even see my face. They hear the voice and they say, ah, I know that voice. You know, it makes me happy. Yeah. It makes me. Look, I went somewhere once. And then they, I walked into this place, and there was a blind gentleman. And he said, uh, you know, that, who is that person? That person sounds like Dayadene Ediwan. And I kept quiet. 
He yeah, said, no, don't, you know. Okay. He now proceeded to tell me the first day I got on radio, he gave the date, the time, wow. what I said. And I'm talking, he said everything, even myself, I, was, I, I, I had forgotten what I said. But he told me what I said, what I, when we signed off, what Kenya, I had sh- shivers. Yeah. So you never know. The things Sometimes, you say, yeah. the things you do, have an in- impact on life. Impact lives. Yeah. All so. right. That's great. We're going to go into the fun random questions. Are you ready? Okay. The first question is, the one artist that you'd like to meet at the Grammys, but you haven't had a chance to. It could be an artist or actually a music executive. To be honest with you, and I said it with a, uh, with a lot of... I met just about everybody I wanted to meet, from Muhammad Ali to late Nelson Mandela to Michael Jackson, Beyonce, Jay-Z, Akon, Missy Elliott. I, I'm, I'm grateful. Yeah. Life has been good to me. Mm-hmm. I've met presidents. I've met governors. I've interviewed. Um, if you don't have one, that's fine. <laughs> the new, this new generation, I don't know. They rob me a different way. I, How so? I, the craft is not as polished as. I mean, I can't compare myself. My meeting a prince, or Michael Jackson, with meet, meeting Quavo's. I mean, what's that name? I can't. Migos. I mean, yeah. Migos. You see, I can't even. <laughs> I mean, I'm not putting them down. No, no, no. I mean, yeah. all a Travis Scott or I know they are. At the top of their game, whatever, or a Drake. Maybe a Drake, I would like to meet Drake, but it wouldn't be the same for me. I, mm. I owe people like, you know, having kids in high regards than I do this new generation. I'm sorry, that's the way I feel. Well, no, yeah, I think this is, I so think if I get to meet them, fine, but yeah. I wouldn't go all out like I would yeah. meet an Anita Baker or Shade, you know. I think, I think there's definitely a generational divide there, so. <laughs> 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 well, that's okay. <laughs> the second question is, what was the first thing that you bought when you earned one million naira? To be honest with you, my first one million naira check, I gave most of it away. Wow. To who? I gave some to my neighbors. <laughs> and look, I lived in the Butemeta at that time. I was living in a one bedroom. And these were people that, in the morning, I would carry my plate to go and buy bread and they were going. And they would say, ah, Uncle T, working in here. I said, no, no, let's go together. Or in the afternoon, when Kenya, we want to eat Amala. He said, ah, sorry about me, Amala. They would go. And... So I, in my now making it, as a, as a matter of fact, at that time, I don't think that money really, I didn't realize that, wow, I have one million naira, mm. to be sincere. It's now when I think of it, because there was one person, I actually gave 100,000 out of that first one million. I gave somebody that the parent actually came back and said, ah, why did you give Shekosi? Was there? I said, no, I just, yeah. that's what my spirit. I do too. And the father thanked me and said, okay, thank you. So I, I gave him mo- most of it. Most okay. of it, not all of it. the second million. <laughs> ah, I'm not <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right, third question is, what are three character traits that you believe are important for an artist to have? Number one is passion. Really, you must believe, you must go after what you want, you must know that you're the best songwriter, you're the best performer, you, you must be convinced, you don't need a record label to tell you that. It must be in you, you must go at it with everything. Um, you must have passion, and it applies to anything in life. You must have that drive that, ah, I am good at this thing, say, I just need that window, that somebody to open that door a bit for me, crack it, I'll get my leg in, ah. You must have that drive and that passion that, ah, Nikki, Nikki, say, I will succeed, mm. say, you know. Whether I'm given an opportunity, but I know I'll be given an opportunity. You must have that drive, you must have that passion. Um, very important, humility. Um, the good book says, those who exalt themselves, be humble, those who humble themselves, no matter how big a star you become eventually, sit somewhere, let them say, ah, no, 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 that's not your seat. Please come and sit on this high table. Don't go and sit at the high table. They will not say, yeah, I'll burn you. Michael Jackson, the Yakodu Kuzibe now. This is where you're supposed to sit. Remain humble. No matter how rich you get, no matter how popular you get, there's nothing you've achieved or you will achieve that somebody hasn't achieved before. Hmm. So remain humble. And 
lastly, give, be given, give mm-hmm. back. There's a reason God placed you on that pedestal. God gave you that talent. God gave you that drive. God sent people to come and help you open doors. God opened doors for you. God gave you that hit song, gave you that record label, gave you that amount of income. Give, and I'm not saying those uh, ones that go on social media and say, hey, find the first 10 people, I'll give 10, thank you. No, find a way to give that you impact life, that they will, some, somebody somewhere will tell your story 10 years from now, ah, my, uh, he was responsible for changing. Mm. Give quietly, that will appease your own spirit that you will know that ah, you will sleep well at night. Yeah. So it's not just, yeah, I'm not saying you shouldn't live well, though, but there's a type of giving that your soul will be at ease that even when you no longer have that kind of income, people will still ah, I my end there one being ah, I told you wow when you come. You understand? Yeah. Fourth question: Which book would you say has had the most impact on your life? Forty Eight Laws of Power. Really? There's many people that hate that book, and then people that why, why do you like that book? Like there's like the, I think there's like a, there's like a divide. I hate that book. I love that book. Actually, two books. If, I, if I'm to be honest. The 48 Laws of Power, because it speaks to life. Mm-hmm. Anything apply, anything applies, whether friendship, business. And then The Power by Rhonda Byrne. Mm-hmm. It talks about, talks about the laws of attraction. And I, that's how I live my life. I believe there are no accidents in life. You are here for a reason. You meet people for a reason. You attract what you think, as a man think it so he is. So yeah. if you think I can, you will. If you mm. think you can't, you will not. Yeah. So those two books, Great. they're my Bibles. Final question, your favorite song and favorite artist of 2019? Can I say two? Yes, you can. One, um, Old Town Road, Lil Nas X. <laughs> okay. It speaks to me. I'm going to take my horse, just ride down. You can't know more. I can't, I can't know more. It speaks to life. I mean, you know, I'm going to go out there, mm-hmm. do everything I need to do, and do it to the best of my ability and see what happens. And for 2019, my best song, Timaya, I can't mm. kill myself. <laughs> Allow me to flex. <laughs> my motto, no matter how bad the day I'm having, hey, I will eat the best food. I would dress well. My father used to say, on your worst day, wear your best clothes, yeah, go out. People, nobody wants to help somebody that looks tattered. So put on your best clothes, smile. Somebody would say, ah, I did one. Jack and Ralph lunch for him. So I will flex. <laughs> I can't kill myself. Tomorrow <laughs> is another day. Yeah. Two days you can't do anything about yesterday and tomorrow. Mm. So why worry? Live today. Be the best. Do the best. Help your fellow man. Still want nobody in one slice of bread. Cut it into two. Give somebody. Because that person, you don't know whether that person ate last night. So when you are complaining, ah, me did you want to me. Somebody didn't eat last night. When you're saying, ah, you know, this shoe, eh, it's going to come. Somebody doesn't even have feet. Are you with me? So in all things, give thanks, but live well. If so, that even God will be happy with you that this being that I created, live life to the fullest. The thing with us is, we live life safely to arrive safely at death. Don't take any chances. Yeah. Don't do anything outside the box. Don't, you know, just, and you expect, no, no, no. Take a chance. Take a leap of faith. Do something different and, and see where life takes you. That's great. So Thank when you. you are in your old age, you won't have any regrets. You'll be like, you die, die peacefully. And I live life to the fullest. I had. You know, somebody, I will tell you good to round up. Yeah. When I bought the Hummer, somebody sat just like you're sitting and asked me, ah, why would you buy that ugly car? It's very ugly. Why would you buy a Hummer? And I always got angry. But of course, 48 laws of power, I said, ah, have you ever bought a Hummer? He said, no. Have you ever been in one? He said, no. Have you ever driven one? When you buy one, or you ride in one, or you drive one, come back and ask me that question. And then I can give you. I'm sure you will give me the answer. So if you've not been in my shoes. Don't think that's true. Thank you so much, Asimba Dayadine, for your time. Thank you for having me.